<clears throat> Shalom, giving all praises, honors, and glories unto Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kwakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well that told me the truth. And Shalom to the sincere and hopeful elect, you brothers out there prophesying in the true name and the true doctrine about the times we're in and headed to. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and those that consist of the elect, the women and children, and helpers that believe. Alright, and um, you know, Shalom, this Kodash Paya. As you can see on the blue letter, you know, I was looking up that word contrite. It's heavy because, you know, King David was in that spirit. And the Lord is, you know, a man, uh, he's a, he's a, he, he, he's to be feared, you know. And when you read Psalms 34 and 18, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Right? And then it tells me in Psalms 51 and 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, a God thou will not despise, right? So basic Google search is what feeling or expression, expressing remorse or patience affected by guilt and, you know, see people in the world, they don't find it uh, remorseful to not want to commit adultery anymore. They don't find it remorseful or not eating these abominable foods. You know, I was talking to somebody about the other, that the other, other day and they just didn't care. And it shows that, one, they don't fear. Two, they don't believe. And if the Lord is really dealing with you, suffering with you through the Spirit, He'll bring you through trials and tribulations so you can have that broken heart, that broken, that contrite, that humble, remorseful, regretful spirit to really be, uh, uh, you know, have no choice but to call upon Him. He'll take away your crib. He'll take away... Things of that nature. The Lord chastised those he loved. But it's to make us grow and be more wise and be closer to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah. Why? Because the times we're coming to, people are not going to understand. They don't understand that everything's happening in prophecy. The Lord is dealing with men first and allowing them to understand, look, you're being go or tried as gold in the furnace. You know, be even as pilgrims in that day, right? And King David was remorseful for what he has done. You see? When you go into Psalms 51. Right? It tells you in, the, in verse 11, it says, Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thine Holy Spirit from me. You know, so you want the Lord to keep that spirit in you, even though you, the Lord puts you through circumstances to grow from it. You know? And that's a what? It says the sacrifices. That's an honorable sacrifice, a humble person. You know, someone who's meek, lowly. Yeah, I wish I was meek and lowly. You know? Um, it says the meek shall inherit the earth. To be crushed, collapse. You know, and that's, you know, it's just speaking in spiritual. Right? The Lord would take, a, take away, take you away. From this world to get you closer to him. Meaning the things of it. Um, let me get a scripture. Now let's get the book of St. Luke chapter 18 verse 9. When Yahweh Shah was speaking about a parable. The parable of the publican and uh, the Pharisee. 
It says, Salakia. It starts at verse 9. It says, And he spake this parable, certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. So you got just like the, the, the wicked scribes and Pharisees. They what? They trusted in themselves and they despised others. People that needed repentance. People that, you know, were sincere. People that they looked down upon. Right? Two men. And we're not here to trust ourselves, man. We're, we're, we're nothing but vessels. We need the Lord. The Lord don't need us. He could raise up stones to prophesy. You know, you got a lot of people that know the truth. Right? True name, true doctrine, everything. And it, it can get to your head. You get prideful. And the Lord hates. He hates a prideful look. This place is nothing but pride. You know, look at me. Look what I did. Look, no. Everything is to glorify Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakhakwadash. And it's a blessing and an honor to declare his name and his truth. Verse 10, two men went up into the temple to pray, the one Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners and unjust adulterers, or even as this publican. So he looked down on this publican. Uh, he, verse 12, I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. So now he's, you know, saying everything that he does. Oh, look what I'm doing. Uh, kind of attitude, right? And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. So the publican didn't even want to look up to the heavens, to the sky. You know, he had his head down. You know, that's how humble he was. But smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful to me. A sinner, and that's why we always, that's why we say the Lord's Prayer, St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. You know, Abanawa Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh, Abanawa Shabbat Shemayim, Kuta Shaya Shemka, Yahweh Malakwathka, Tabaar Ratazaka. And Lord willing, you know, that's that's Hebrew, but that prayer tells you, you know, Lord, you know, our Father which is in heaven, holy be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And you tell him, uh, you're begging to the Lord. You're pleading with him. Forgive me. You know? Um, just like with King David. You know, Lord, please forgive me for what I've done. You know, you're pleading. You're pleading with him. And right now is the time to plead unto him as much as you can. You know, the Lord knows your spirit, man. But we're not out here boasting of ourselves. You know? I tell you, this man... Went down to his house justified. So the Lord justified him, the publican, rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. And that's the point. Like the scriptures in Sirach tells you that the one that was never thought of, every, uh, um, yeah, the one that was never thought of had worn the crown. You know? The scriptures also say the first shall be last and the last shall be first. We don't mind being last in this place. Let everybody be known and everything here is corrupt. You know, we're supposed to store our treasures in heaven. We're supposed to have faith in him that he's going to grant us through our prayers and everything we need. You know, for everyone that exalteth himself, we're not exalting ourselves. You know, let the Lord justify you in due season. You know? Hold thy peace and let the Lord and the Lord shall fight for thee, as the scriptures say. And he that humble himself shall be exalted. And you know, the Lord will put you through things to, to put that real humble, you know, spirit on you. Really be remorseful for what you have done. Reflect. We reflect on ourselves daily. Though our outward man perish, our inward man is renewed day by day. You know? And your spirit, we don't want to be in this earth no more, but we got to do what we got to do for the moment. And um, hasting in the day of the coming of our Lord. Wanting, wanting righteousness to be restored on earth. 
You know, I'm tired of seeing this place. We tired, tired of working, tired of paying bills, tired. You just tired of just sending, man. Just tired, of, sick and tired of being sick and tired. Anyway, you know, we got to keep the faith. You know, he that humble himself shall be exhausted. With that, I hope this lesson was edifying. Till next time, shalom.